You're about to listen to Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games. It's a comedy video game podcast. We would like to stress that the hosts are not experts and are really just very crass commentators. Seriously, this is an explicit podcast that happens to talk about video games sometimes. So please enjoy this pretty okay podcast with Tyler and Dave. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another Tadpog podcast. I had to work the blow the cobwebs off that. Yeah. Exercise, exercise that muscle. It's been a while. Yeah. yeah. It's been a little while. Been a minute. Uh, we're two old guys. What? Uh, three old guys. Three old guys. Oh. Three old guys. Yeah. Play old games. So, Dave, Dave I'm back. Hey, welcome back. I'm welcome back. back. I've missed you a lot. Thank you. As I'm sure everybody has. Yes. Yeah. We all have. It's very nice. Well, see, that actually. I figure I need to come clean. The reason I haven't been on lately is uh, so we got sent this this uh, ca- uh, cave caveman games <laughs> caveman regular games regular Nintendo cartridge. Yes, and I was like, man, I love that you called it the regular regular, regular Nintendo. Nintendo. That's what I've been doing all day. <laughs> um, so I want to do the, I want to do this, but we need to have we need to have Kyle Purball on for it. Yeah. yeah. So so I called Kyle and I was like, hey, come on. He was like, no, fuck you. <laughs> But Kyle. I was like, come on, I want to do this. He's like, I don't want to be on the show. I was like, well, fine, I'm on strike until you come on and do this game. And it took three episodes. It took three episodes for him to break and be no. like, man, fuck. We need leading anthropologist, Edgelord <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> How's everyone doing tonight? Yeah, making, making your Tadpog debut. I know, it's pretty weird to be sitting here in the blanket for it. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, this, this junk table and blanket. Oh, blanket no, floor. this is this is fantastic. So I'm used to the uh, used to the, the walls being like this. This is how I've spent uh, 20 years. Walls. Of my life. Yeah, yeah this, is, this has been 20 years of my life, pretty much. So, like this office that I have now is the first time that I've not been a part of the cubicles, and I actually go out with my employees like half the time just to check on them, and I'm sitting up with them. It's like, okay, I'm more comfortable now. So. Put you back in a tiny box and put you to work. Yeah. There you go. Tuesdays are super weird for me because I do work all day and then I go home for 20 minutes and then I come into this <laughs> into this tiny room which is lined with cubicle walls, which makes great for it's great for sound absorption. Oh, yeah. I want some of these for for home, mm-hmm. but I I looked online and I was like Melissa got a really good deal when she got these because uh they're expensive. It's like all the I think all these but f- I got four of them for like ninety five bucks or something like it's that. Really oh good. my gosh! It's really good. I had to meet a guy, this old this old guy in Madisonville who had like part of a, a a truck bed, like a big like covered trailer, and he's like, "Yeah, they're back here." And I helped him like pull blow them off and pull them out. <laughs> All right, sure, awesome. All right, that's fantastic. And then my dad mounted wheels to them, so. That's awesome. Real good stuff. Real good stuff. Very good. Very nice. Because the job that I moved to, I mean, where I moved up to Elkhart, uh, they had to redo the entire finance area. And I, and, uh, I think they spent like fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 on all these cubicles, like <laughs> 20, 25 cubicles. <laughs> and I could, as I was telling Dave earlier, I could walk by, if I wanted to, just punch one, just break it. <laughs> I, could just, I could just pick one up, take it over my knees, just fucking break it. And like, oh, there you go. There's, you know, there's all that money spent. There's three thousand dollars. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like you're, you're like the, you're the Bo Jackson of uh, I, cubicle I, walls. You I, just break I, them over your knee. I, I, uh, if I decide to quit, I'll let you know how that works. <laughs> you just do it until your knee breaks. Fine, just yeah. like Bo Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> Well, of course, this week we are doing Caveman Games. Uh, for the regular Nintendo. For the regular Nintendo. Sent in to us by Faceful of Alien Wing Wong. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. I forgot who did it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I remember. <laughs> because he showed up in the stream, and it was when I streamed this on Twitch, and uh, it was uh, like, you bastard. Why did you do this to <laughs> us? <laughs> Well, and then on top of it, I'm like, oh, my God, Caveman Games, please let me be on the show. You were very excited about Caveman Games, Oh, gosh, I games, was. Kyle. Um, yeah, I, I was. Uh, was? <laughs> was uh, I, I was telling Melissa about this game, and she was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty It's pretty bad, I think. I think it's fair to say. I know we're only like, I don't know, five minutes in the podcast. But <laughs> spoilers. Spoilers. Uh, it's a pretty bad game, I think. Well, I'm your bearded host, Tyler. But Kyle, I think you have a you have an intro story. Oh, I could tell all sorts of intro stories. But if we want to talk specifically about caveman games, I mean, oops, all intros. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, with this particular one, um, 
because when I was like 11, 12 years old, because we didn't even have a Walmart until I was like 14 or 15 years old in Bloomington. They just didn't exist? Or? Well, no, they were Mar- <laughs> the nearest one was in Martinsville. It's like a half hour north, but we would always go to Kmart. And uh, if you go hey, to the I watched like- a video that Kmart was really the big deal for like. 30 years. It like, really is. Is it because of their food between, court? Like, they had a really nice. Oh, they had, <laughs> no, the one when I was a kid had a killer, the big K Cafe. So it had like yeah, a killer because you could go around. It was like this boxed off like this. They actually had places for you to park your carts. Like it was a big fucking deal to actually go in there and say, I'm going to eat at the big K Cafe. Yeah, man. They had ICs and stuff there. Oh, it was yeah. a big deal. I remember the one close to us, the giant one in Lone Oak was always awesome. But from what I, I read, like Target capturing sort of the higher end market or being able to put like clothes to the middle class. They they locked that away. Walmart going for like the smaller populations with the more urban, like left Kmart with nowhere to go. Exactly. Yeah. And bad management and bad store layout. It just See, I just assume like even as a kid, I just assumed that Kmart was like when we go to Kmart, I remember like being like, Mom, are we poor? <laughs> <laughs> No, we it, are until your sister's born. <laughs> She'll have a very different life. <laughs> well, and and Walmart, we actually had two of them, one on the east side and one on the west side. So we were like spoiled that we had two Kmart's in town. So, but two Kmart's. Oh yeah, man. But at that time, I was a uh, eleven and twelve. So what I was doing was every week I was getting five dollars for my allowance. So what I would do is you could take five dollars and put it down towards layaway. Layaway. So that's what I'm doing every week. So for the first game I did it with was Final Fantasy. You're much wiser with your five dollars. I, <laughs> oh, I would yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> spend my five dollars on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles yeah. arcade and, game. And that game was like forty five dollars. So that was literally two months of me paying oh. five dollars every week, pumping it into because you had ten weeks that you could get it out. Only so, forty five dollars. Yeah, so it was something like that. Forty five dollars. Pretty good. Oh yeah. What is Final Fantasy? <laughs> oh, uh, it's, yeah, it's a, some boring game that <laughs> no one ever talks about. But that's the one that I got, and I spent twelve weeks beating that. And I remember specifically is eighty four days because I remember that we had a ninety day return policy. <laughs> and I happened to have my receipt, had all the boxing. This is where the dumb part of me comes in at 11 years old, thinking, I will take this back so I can get another game. Right. Well, the next game that I got, it was actually Chippendale's Rescue Rangers, which is still a very good game. It is a good game. And I, kept, I actually kept that one for a very long time. But the next game that I actually did this, pump $5 every week into a cycle, was later that year, which was caveman game yeah oh, so there caveman. i went for eight weeks pumping in five dollars a week because i was so impressed well first thing i was just blown away with the comedy of the game and the idea and this <laughs> man how old were you i was 12 okay in your defense you were 12 yes i was All 12 right. so this is a 20 this is me 28 years ago talking yeah. about this yeah yeah and the <laughs> other part what about it was and i don't know why i was this way uh-huh. was that you loved cavemen well, Obsessed I'm, with cavemen. No, I fucking, still are. No, I fucking hated Captain <laughs> Caveman. Go figure. I didn't actually like most yeah. cavemen, and that might get me hurt by some people. So they can yeah, yeah they can come they can come beat me up. Uh, were you a Fred Flintstone guy or? Um, not really either. No. Barney Rubble. I was more okay. Barney than right. I was Fred, so right. I did respect Barney. Okay, you respected him. All right, yeah, yeah I, okay. I appreciate him. that. I don't like you because <laughs> you're a caveman, but you're a hunter wife. Yeah, he yeah. Did. Oh wow, I thought there's gonna be a debate yeah. here. Oh no, 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 no. Betty, no that's a universal Betty, fact. Yeah, yeah. yeah Betty yeah. is the and hot I, wife, and I like redheads. Yeah, and Betty's still the <laughs> Betty's still the hot wife. <laughs> Well, Wilma had the better kid, though. The yeah. well-behaved kids. So. Yeah. W- Wilma's just all triangles. That's what I don't yeah. like about Wilma. Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. That little triangle neck, too. Oh, yeah, no yeah, triangles. It. Not good. But, what? oh, my gosh, I'm getting lost here. I um, did that on purpose. No, I, I know, like. I know. You just, you talk, you know. I'm easy to take off on a tangent. So, like, here, I'll just follow you that way. Trust uh, me. After uh, doing the last three episodes, which I really enjoyed doing with, with Josh and Jacob, they did wonderful. I'm really glad that they, they were did, able to. They did, and I'm very appreciative of that. Yes, yes, it was awesome they did, of them. They did great. But I wasn't able to do my favorite thing to do on this show, which is try to derail somebody's train of thought. Well, I well you did, but I'm back to it. Oh, damn it! And okay. the other reason that I was so impressed with this, and I don't know why I had this in my head, but games that I knew were previously on PC and being ported over to the Nintendo, I thought was the biggest deal. And I thought, oh crap, this is actually being ported over. I've heard of this game, 
And so that, to me, was like instantly attracted me to it more. Why is that? I think it's because I never owned a computer okay. until I was even like 17. Okay. And even then when I bought, my dad bought me one, so that way I could do uh, papers in high school. It was like a 10-year-old computer at that time. <laughs> So I was already <laughs> so far behind the curve, even yeah, yeah, when I yeah, finally yeah. got one. But it was just still that big deal. Dad, like, I don't want to play Doom! <laughs> no, you can play 1986 Golf by hitting your <laughs> space bar. Yes, up top. Yes, I played that as a kid. So, Fuck yes. No, but that is, uh, but that was a big deal to me. So that's, that was the other part of the appeal. And then because you spent that much time investing and two months have gone by and you've bought this game, you're going to spend two months playing it. Is that, I mean, okay, so let me, okay, so it was just the fact that Caveman Games was a PC game that was ported for NES. That was one of the, that was one of the big deals, yes. Because, like, when I looked at, when I looked at the art for the game, it I'm, was... I'm sorry you didn't get Maniac Mansion then, because that would have been the better thing to spot. That no. was... I had that ah, one. Ah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> like I said, I mean, all these people are, like, they brought up with the classics, they brought up with the Super Mario 3s and the Contras and all these things. No, that, not me. I'm brought up with Caveman Games, <laughs> <laughs> Wall Street Kid, <laughs> Maniac Mansion, <laughs> all right. Z- Zexus, like all these other yeah. off, the, off the wall titles. <laughs> off brand titles. Exactly. Yeah. You did curse yeah. with the Wall, Wall Street Kid. I remember that now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. But I derailed you, Dave. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, the art. Uh, I, I'm amazed like that any kid ever would want this game because <laughs> this game was ported. Okay, so Dave reads from Wikipedia. This is like off the top of his head. This was like a one-paragraph thing on Wikipedia. Like there's not a whole lot of information. This game was like originally came out in like 1988, I think, for the Commodore 64. Yes. Um, and it was ported in... 1990. I want everybody. I want everybody <laughs> to let that sink in. That this game was mm. came to the NES in 1990, one year before the Super Nintendo. So like around the same time that um, Kirby's Adventure, like God. you know, like one of the best looking NES God. games. That's around the time that this came out. But like, okay. So my point is, looking at the art, this is like some straight up like if someone colorized a BC comic. <laughs> In the 1970s, yep. and then put yep. it on a game. That's that's kind of what it Thank looks like. Thank you for to reminding me. me. I actually did like BC Comics. Hey, okay, not- I found one caveman <laughs> thing I liked. That must have been. What about the Geico caveman? Did you like uh, those? Like those cavemen? Yes, but All only right. selective commercials. Okay. <laughs> All right. See, the, the, Situational. We, we can, yeah, we can spend we can spend a, a later podcast talking about uh, which caveman which which uh, caveman Geico commercials are the best. <laughs> that's pretty much going to be this one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but we do have a present over there before we get down to, uh, down to any more nitty gritty. We do oh. a Christmas present. This Christmas wrapping is in here. <laughs> um, oh, and I'm sorry, Dave. I missed it. Uh, I missed what the the 14th of February, which as everyone knows is Sean Miller's birthday. So hash- happy belated Sean Miller's birthday, hashtag. the most romantic hey, holiday of the year. <laughs> Uh, like like the cavemen used to do, we're gonna open this Christmas present on February nineteenth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, here, um, Tyler, you open it. Yeah. All right. It, it feels like a book. It's a heavy boy. Don't say that about Phil. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yes. Oh. Oh. Beep, 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 beep. The winner. We have a winner. Oh, oh, oh my God. So on this card, which is Millhouse eating gum out of a pack of baseball cards, maybe? Nice. Nice. Hey, guys. While Christmas shopping at the local antique mall, I came across this box of old, unopened Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cards. Oh, my God. Yes. I don't know if you were all card collectors as kids, yes. but I do know Dave has a fat boner for TMNT stuff. Yes. So I it seemed too good to pass up. I had I collected those cards. No. I can't remember if I had all of them or not, but like my <laughs> mom would got tired of me asking if I could have another pack of those. Tops Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cards. Holy shit. You can open up a couple of packs when you're in need of an intro. Who cares if it's a vis- visual component in an audio medium? You eat stuff on the mic, and that seems to be popular. <laughs> it's <Speaking> debatable. <laughs> Speaking of which, the thing that sold this gift was the card pack still have the gum inside. Yes. I desperately want to hear you guys try 30-year-old Top's <laughs> yes. brand TMNT gum. Let's do it. Merry pop, Christmas, pop. gents. Let's Phil. do it. Thank you, Sandwich Pope Phil. Holy shit. If you're brave enough to open up three packs, I'm in. Yeah, let's fucking do it. Let's open up three packs. All right. That's my rap name, all right. three packs. Looks like it's all Leo... 
or Raph? You want a Leo or you want a Raph? Uh, well, um, Raph tastes so good. All right. <laughs> you want a Leo or you want a Raph? You know I want a Raph. And I'm going to open a Leo then. All right. Man, 25 cents. Yeah. Got that Got that good wax paper? I know, right, man? This <laughs> oh my is God. like... Oh, okay. This is bringing back some fucking memories right here. This wax oh. paper and the cards that are like uncoated. Oh, yeah. mine is broken apart. Mine oh, too. I got a sticker here. Did Phil mention how much he got it for? He did not. I was actually taking a look at what series that was because... Was there more than one well, there, yeah, series? There, yes, because there's actually at the... The one in Shepherdsville that was right by my house. There's a series two. They have series two unopened boxes. I didn't know that. I collected yeah. these, and I collected the. Um, my the, gum has impressed itself onto this sticker. I know, this, <laughs> yeah, I had to peel mine off. The stickers all connect and make a poster. Ah, yes. Well, we could make that whole poster and then sell it. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> make <Money>. millions. <laughs> Are you ready to do the gum? That's mine is also yeah, like yep, glass yeah. shards. It's fallen into a bunch of pieces. This gum that is certainly going to kill us. Older than Nicole, <laughs> since I brought him into her earlier. Okay. Ready? Yep. One, two, three. <laughs> oh god. Oh. It's not gumming yet. No. no. Oh. It tastes like cardboard. <laughs> It sounds like it's just disintegrating in my mouth. I Come on, gum. Oh, oh, we are. Uh. I spit it out. Yeah, we all Come spit on. it out. That was. I don't want to swallow that. That doesn't no. taste like something you should swallow. It looks like chunky Pepto. Ugh. It does. Yeah. I shouldn't have spit it out of my hand first. <laughs> why, why did I agree to this? Why, why didn't I just let you two? Because <laughs> you're a trooper. Oh, my yeah, God. I, oh. Jesus, I think honestly this is worse than the fucking squids that Time Lord Josh Edwards sent us. Oh wow! Ugh. And those had faces. I really thought I could tough it out too. It's like I'm gonna be the brave one here, and then just like no. I was afraid to swallow it when it didn't gum mm. up. Like I was like, mm. this is poison, and I don't want to like. <laughs> I don't want all three of our tombstones to read. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't have had that gum, man. <laughs> that and that would have been manslaughter, Phil. By the way. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay. Thanks, Phil. Bleah. Wow, that was... Yep. Wow, yes. That was really, really bad. Mm. Well, we can do that still so many more times to people that come on the show. Okay, that goes down good with some malort, so... Oh, God. Oh, man. That's the new deal. You want to be on the show, you got to eat one of... You got to chew up one of those pieces of gum. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I've taken that challenge then, so it's on the next person. Kyle, you've been initiated. Yep. I want to look and see what sweet cards I got. I got Rocksteady's Revenge. Oh. Which I would like to point out on the card, Rocksteady's Revenge is actually Bebop. <laughs> 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 Off to a good start. Nice. Here's looking at you, kid. We were just talking about oh, Humphrey, Humphrey Bogart. Bogart. Nice. And how it uh, how the only reason I know who knew who Humphrey Bogart was as a kid was because of the Teenage Mutant <laughs> Ninja Turtles. Um, all right, foot soldier spinning a valve. All right. A mean green machine a, with a very off-model Donatello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's like a Tom and Jerry version of Donatello. Yeah, it's way off. And a uh, little Michelangelo boy. That's oh. great. Man. I used to collect these, and I used to collect the, the movie cards, the Turtles movie cards. Mm. I enjoy this looking at them, that every single character name has a trademark. It's like Raphael trademark. trademark. Shredder trademark. And... Splinter, trademark, comma, S, apostrophe S, sorry, skill. Splinter, trademark, <laughs> apostrophe, apostrophe S, S, skill. Gotcha. <laughs> they can't trademark splinters, no. <laughs> but that's Splinter. What, I got Ninja Pizza, Raphael, Unsinkable April. What? She's, she's just in water. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for action, which is a shiny, shiny uh, oh, katana. I was about to say, is again April. Yep. And then <laughs> the Shredder. I think we got the same. We might have got pretty much. No, I didn't get the April one, but I got the Shredder and the Ready for action. And I have, and you have, what, Raphael? It's pretty similar. Yeah. All right. Oh, my God, that gum. That was appropriate. That wasn't gum. That, that was... <laughs> After 30 years, it transmutes into something else. It's caveman gum. Like, I felt it all over uh, my face as I was eating it. It was. That was caveman oh. gum. It's just pink bark. Yeah. Yikes. I, I mean, it's still... I got the gum dust on my fucking lips still. This is the... <laughs> my hands are sticky. This is the worst. 
Thanks, Phil. Thanks for Christmas, Thank you. Phil. You don't get a happy Sean Miller's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, while we all recover, Dave, do you hear that? I do hear that. It sounds like um, it sounds like a whole bunch of men in their late mid to late to early forties. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> mid mid to, all right. Mid mid to late thirties and early forties. Um, almost. Hey, I got a few dying. more months before I hit my mid thirties. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're pretty much you're there. <laughs> you're I'm there. only at the zero. Sorry. I'm only at the zero mark of the forty. So, <laughs> so you've had look that gum that you just had took at least four years That's off true. your life. <laughs> yeah, God, Melissa's already thirty five. I'm kind of fuck this thirty five year old chick. Jesus, I know, Jesus. man. Pretty, it's <laughs> pretty hot, man. Yeah, yeah, cougar. Uh, of course, I hear that, which ushers in a segment that we like to call Dave reads from Wikipedia. Uh, it's going to be very much what I just said because it is literally <laughs> two sentences. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a very popular game. Uh, if you want to look this up, if you want to play at home and look up uh, caveman games on Wikipedia, go ahead and look up caveman Olympics. <laughs> Ug Olympics. <laughs> it would. They changed the title for the NES. Uh, caveman Olympics is a 1988 Olympic-themed sports video game set in the Stone Age. It was developed for the Commodore 64 and MS-DOS by Dynamics and published by Electronic Arts. So it's essentially a, the original Apex Legends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Nintendo Entertainment System version named Caveman Games was ported and released by Data East of Karnov fame, uh, a subsidiary of Data, Data East. So the U.S. the U.S. branch did Caveman <laughs> Games. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the port's... I haven't played the original game, but I will say that the port is lazy, and I know that it's lazy because um, they don't say player one or controller one. They say keypad one. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very much one of those where it's like, ah, okay. You ported it directly as it was or tried to. And now that I'm thinking about this game, we're talking about the timing being of 1988 mm-hmm. because this game does definitely does not look like 1988. At all. Or 90 when it came out. But by the what I think happened is that somehow they were trying to make it originally maybe for the 84 games. And it just, they missed the timing or someone came up with it maybe in uh, 85 okay. and just said, you know what? We're going to hold off on this until oh, the, the Olympic eight, games. Yeah, yeah until I the 88 you. Summer Olympic Games okay. come out. And then we're going to time it along with that. Like we've got this sitting on a, mm-hmm. sitting on a shelf somewhere for like three years. And then finally, this is the time we, we can release it. We won't progress that much in, in three years' time. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it'll be, it'll it'll be, be fine. a great decision. Oh, God, no. And then let's wait two more years to port it to the NES. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I want to point out that it came out on the NES in October of 1990 so it like that, 1990 is almost fucking man. over and they're like let's put this game out that looks like battered asshole like this game <laughs> looks really really bad battered chapped, chapped asshole <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's a horrible game all right now kyle you go <laughs> okay <laughs> what did you so, think when you paid that money uh, you went home at put the this time, in your nes at the time i actually enjoyed it and i think the reason that i did was because trying to justify I, got, the I got really good at the event okay. so i just thought okay this is a game i've actually sort of mastered at the time so you might so, say you're one of the top 10 caveman game players in the world whoa uh, you know what? In 1991, I would have put my <laughs> skills up against some people. But we all could have said that in 1990, I feel like. Yeah. When the internet came like around. I, mean, I, I was busy being sick, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dreaming about fucking a seven-year-old. Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I want to go into speedrun.com and find out what the like world record is for going through the cave, the caveman Olympics. So that way I can just fucking destroy them. I can do that for you. Oh, gosh. Yes, you can. Tell me about tell me about the six events in this game. Okay, so because it's we, set up like the Olympics. Yes, the Ugg Olympics. Yes, so we have six events you have to master. Which if I'm trying to remember them all off the top of my head, I know that we have the saber race. The saber where, race. Yes, where you and another player have to outrace a saber toothed tiger and get to the tree to climb up on it. We have the dino race, where you are racing against another player, which you should be racing side by side, but of course you're not. It's you're split two screen split, for whatever split reason. Screened. And trying to race to the end. We have the fire, I can't remember what it is, the fire starting event. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Prodigy's favorite. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the, 
almost like the joust, whatever it is that we're standing up on the two edges of the cl- whatever it is the in- the intimidation round. Yes, <laughs> clubbing is the clubbing. Name of the yes, event. clubbing. <laughs> then of course we have the Dino Vault, where your job is to use your javelin, po- use your pole to vault yourself over a dinosaur between twenty and thirty foot, depending on what you want to choose. Uh huh. <laughs> Some of those. People like to jump over 30. Like you. Yeah. <laughs> Bragger. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe that I actually, like, like I said, I hadn't played it, truly played in like 15 to 20 years. And like on my fifth or sixth try, it's like 30 is like, oh, pff, no problem. It all came back like riding a bike. <laughs> yeah. Like those two <laughs> events did. This one and the last one, the mate toss. Mate toss is like the best. It's the best event in the game. <laughs> it's the best <laughs> event of the game. And yeah. it's the first event that where I went. Oh shit! I really wanted to be a part of this. <laughs> oh, on oh, this episode? Well, like, no, 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 because I was playing it. And not I the was caveman just in... lifestyle, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, no. You know because... what? This caveman had it right. I always hated <laughs> caveman the whole time. Well, because I'm playing it when I'm 12, and it's funny as hell to be grabbing your wife by the ankles and spinning her around and trying to throw her as far as possible. We don't know that it's the Ma- it competitor's mate. wife or mate. mate. We don't know that. I think, but but it, it is, this is pro LGBTQ. It's way ahead of its time because that, you play the female case. Man, you still got a female mate to throw. But here's my point: we don't know whose mate that cave woman oh, is. Okay, because well, it's true. the same one. You're throwing it's, the same woman, no matter who you're playing as. <laughs> I think it might be. But, well, the gene pool is pretty think, small. They all look alike. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that's <laughs> racist. <laughs> I think it's all of theirs. So. Yeah, shared. Yeah, they're all. That's it's, their sister wife. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how it got started. So it was uh, polygamy, BC. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, you're right. It all could just be that everybody has the same mate. It's all just that one girl. The, Everyone's just laying to that one, that one cave lady, the brood mother. Because what back then? I say back then. What in older tribal society wasn't it thought like you always wanted to have the the woman should have sex with multiple men to get like have sex with the smart guy, the strong guy, the good hunter. So you'll take all those genes to make the child. I so didn't everybody know that. needs to come inside. And then they turned it and then they took that and turned it into a 90, 1980s cartoon called The Smurfs. I was oh, I, I was going to say go. I thought you were going with and then they turned that into a porn genre. <laughs> <laughs> the multi impreg <laughs> Igna Gangbang is her yes. name. <laughs> the speed run uh, the record for this is Five minutes, 55 seconds, 660 milliseconds. I don't know what the requirements are for that. Okay. I can view the rules. I'll, I'll watch it. Yeah. Let's, let's see the rules on this. All right. You got to get in-game world records for each event, okay. except clubbing. This was made by somebody who clearly is not good at clubbing, is my guess. <laughs> I don't think no, because it doesn't really club judge clubbing by time. It just judges yeah, clubbing no by who it's wins. Just when it's done. Exactly. Timer starts on start the games, and timer stops on Saber Race's new record text. Okay. But I guess my point is, yeah, you're not timed in clubbing, but you're not timed in a lot of games that people speed run. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. isn't a speed run typically, like, start to finish? Well, I think it's just because you can't physically set a... Re- like, winning that event, they don't give you a new record that pops up on the thing. They just yeah, say, but that doesn't happen in Contra. Well, true. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's like, to me, it seems like... Should well, whoever be- has the world record, message them. Yeah. Yeah. And ask, why? <laughs> that would be um, Belthic Gaming. So, yeah, message <laughs> Belthic Gaming and, and ask why clubbing is not... Of all the speed Somebody wants to tweet Belphic Gaming for us, please. Let's figure this out. Please, yeah. We got we got a crack team on it. And as someone who watches Which is Micah. <laughs> <laughs> as someone who watches as much retro gaming as I do on Twitch, I can't I've never heard of that name, so <laughs> there's so uh, feel, feel, a s- second place. Okay. G G G G G G unit. <laughs> nope. And then there, those are the only two. So, so you I, get, I got a chance. I could be third place then just by just, uh, the Mexican runner didn't even get a world. World record speedrun in this. Come on. I mean, Come on. Uh, technically, I could submit my Twitch play from <laughs> Sunday and get third. Oh, do, do it. Oh, yeah. Dave, Dave, do it. Zug Life. <laughs> Three hours. <laughs> yeah, please. Come on. <laughs> it's actually, it doesn't take that long. So 
Like, I didn't get world records on stuff, but the the game doesn't take that long. All oh, okay. Doing all six events is pretty short. I guess um, that's why it's part of the rules, because, like, they want you to not only... They don't want you to play poorly to get through it as fast as possible. Yeah. Because I guess on, like, the saber race, you could just, like, get eaten by the saber tooth tiger immediately and then go It'd to the next done. event. Yeah. Exactly. Right? No, that, that makes sense. So, okay, maybe I misread the whole clubbing thing. Maybe you still need to get first place in clubbing. It's just... You don't have to get a world record. Again. Exactly. Okay. All right. I take it back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Belthick Gaming. <laughs> Please stop <laughs> tweeting Belthick Gaming. All right. Well, I guess there are different cave people to choose from that have strengths and weaknesses. And they have nice long bios about themselves, too. <laughs> Very long. Way too detailed for anything of a game like this. <laughs> Littered with sweet jokes <laughs> did, did my verbal air quotes come through mm, okay, yes yeah i felt that. yeah great i do wish when i was streaming it i wish i would have had like a button i could press for like a uh because <laughs> there were a lot of those where it's like yeah i could see like being like 10 11 12 like those would be funny jokes and I, they're not, I don't know. They, <laughs> well, they, they, they don't hold up. Well, like I said, I was 12 when I played yeah. this, and that was very funny to me at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and then I became 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as I was talking about earlier with the mate toss, then I realized, oh, grabbing your mate by the ankles and throwing them 90 feet doesn't sound like such a good, de- <laughs> good pretty, idea after <laughs> this all. This game's even better after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> The, did you guys know that the ESRB came about because of Caveman Games? That, 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 <laughs> yeah. uh, Tipper Gore was just so offended. <laughs> God, if I had a dime for every time we talked about Tipper Gore on yeah. this podcast. If I, had a, if I had a dime for every time I saw Al Gore grab her by the ankles and spin her around. <laughs> I had a friend in college. I'm going to throw my wife. <laughs> I had a friend in college who was actually run over by Tipper Gore, not phys- like physically, her and her security detail. <laughs> she was doing a uh, event at IU so and like they were like, hush- like ushering her through the hallway. And my friend Melissa was actually trying to walk through the hallway, and one of the security people her just like they were pushing through, and she got pushed over <laughs> by fucking Tipper Gore. Fucking Tipper Gore. <laughs> Is that like a Ray Stevens song from the mid nineties? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm just trying to think how many how many other first ladies can I name? Well, let's do it real quick. All right, Lady Bird Johnson, uh-huh. uh huh, Rosalind uh, Carter. You're really you're good at That's this. Better than me. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, was, Michelle Obama, sure. Hillary Clinton, mm-hmm. Melania Trump, mm-hmm. uh, Barbara Bush. Yeah. Martha Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mary Todd Lincoln. There you go. That's the one I was. That was my ace and ace up the sleeve. Oh man, Mm -hmm. who's Nixon's wife? Miss Nixon. Do you have one? (laughs) Lady Devil. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Uh, I don't know Gerald Ford's wife. Geraldine. Geraldine. Geraldine Ford. Geraldine Ford. Ford. (laughs) Actually, married his twin sister. (laughs) It's very very bizarre. Uh, That's probably all I got. Uh, Jackie Kennedy. Jackie Kennedy. There you go. All right, one. All yeah. right I got All one right. in there. Yeah. And then we named uh, George H. W. Bush's wife Laura. Laura or? Bush. Laura Bush. We didn't name Laura Bush. Yeah, I right. got two in there. We didn't forgot, name... forgot he was president for eight years. <laughs> 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 I slept through that decade. I mean, Tipper so. Gore's not even a first lady. She's a second lady, I guess. So. Yeah, second lady. <laughs> yeah. She's How many sh- second ladies can I name? <laughs> She's the Chicago. Barbara Bush. What, Barbara <laughs> Sells <Scouts>? Yes. <laughs> Reagan, uh, Nancy Reagan. There we go. Oh gosh, how did I forget? Nancy? Uh, All right. <laughs> yeah, that's not a problem. Well, who's uh, FDR's wife? Did we, did we name that M- one? MFDR. <laughs> WFDR. I'm pretty sure that's a drug. That's a club drug, isn't it? MFDR. It makes your legs go numb. You just fall over. <laughs> oh, I got the party party polio. Yeah. <laughs> Put a blanket on my legs. <laughs> well, let's hide it from mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we, re- we re- go over some of these bios? Do we want to? No, I don't want to go over the bios. All right. <laughs> no, they take two, they- <laughs> what are their names? All right. You ready for the names? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to save <clears throat> the best for last. Uh, okay, so we got we got Gronk. I want to start with Gronk yeah. because Gronkowski. Yep, Gronk is good at everything. Someone had to tell me about Gronkowski because I didn't know about Gronkowski. Gronk is good at everything, um, and he's got he has the he's kind of like if Jeffy from Family Circus like grew up and grew a beard. That's kind of what he looks like <laughs> to me because he's essentially got like 
a bowl cut for his face. Like his hair and his beard are kind of like the bulk, or like a you know like a an old fryer where they got like the ball. Oh, yes. They got the bald top, okay, but they got yeah, the, yeah. the bowl cut. Mm-hmm. If you just shifted that forward, like the bald spot was a mask. <laughs> that's what Gronk looks like. Uh, then you got uh, Vincent, who I played as to begin with because he is bespectacled, uh, yes. and he is the absolute worst he character is, in the terrible. game. Like, and they tell you in the bio, he's like shrinks none. <laughs> Just, <laughs> but then they like go on about how like how smart he is. He's like he's really super smart, uh, but Doesn't he's not help you in an athletic yes, competition. Not good at this game. <laughs> uh, then His the, dick is so big. <laughs> <laughs> Probably why he can't do all the events. I mean, how are you gonna how are you gonna jump over Get a th- that thirty foot dick? If there was a Caveman Big Johnson t-shirt, it really would. <laughs> Vincent yeah. really, like, he does yeah. look he, like the Big Johnson. Yeah. Uh, then there's Ugha. Ugha. <laughs> Ugha. Uh, then there's Crudla. The, Crudla. The, the female comp- mm-hmm. uh, contender. Uh, there's Glunk. I like to think of Glunk and Gronk being the, the Dave and Dan of <laughs> yeah. the Stone Age. Uh, and then... One that we need to be very, very careful when we pronounce. We have to enunciate this. Thag. <laughs> thag. 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 H. Th. Thag. 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 What, it took me a second when you said glonk and glonk. I was like, who were those? The old, like, two-panel comics. Goofus and Gallant. <laughs> <Yeah>. So the... <laughs> Gronk always picks up his stones when he's done <laughs> lighting a fire. Go- Goofus never wiped down woman he raped after finished. <laughs> Glonk <laughs> always spray off, spray off victim. Uh, Glonk, <laughs> Glonk water down gene pool. Oh <laughs> yeah, I bet being a caveman uh, sucked. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was terrible. I bet, I bet it really That's sucked. why you introduced Sky Cake. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And Sky Baklava. So we so we stop murdering and raping each other. Yep. Oh yeah. So we'll put that Patton Oswalt bit somewhere in the show Sky notes. Gate. Yeah, it'll be in the show notes. <laughs> <sighs> well, talked about how much we liked mm. the mate throw. I mean, like is relative. Yeah, it's relative, relative compared to everything it, else. It is the one that I think brings you in the easiest because I don't know. It's just. I don't know, it's, the, it's not the, necessarily the easiest one to do. It's got an element of a challenge of it because you've got to be paying attention to two things at once because you're slowly working your controller this way. Then you're almost to the point where all you do is press up and down, up and down. Then you got to like hold. You're about this to make the, someone come the way your hands are. I'm yeah. probably good. Yeah. I, that's why I was telling Dave's like you got to push that button. And you gotta learn how to jerk it right. That's, well, that's probably believe- what it was. I wasn't jerking off at that age quite yet, so I was. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have quite the tarpal tunnel that I do now, so I could, I could sit there and pound that button. You, you might, you might, you might be too embarrassed to say it on the show, but actually, what you told me was you got to press the B button like you're sticking your thumb in your ass when you're coming. Oh yeah, that, that part too. <laughs> yeah. oh, you're probably too embarrassed to <laughs> no, say that thing again that you just said. Earlier. <laughs> I wasn't embarrassed. Too embarrassed. I just, I just simply forgot. I, I for, forgot it verbatim. If I, if I remembered it, trust me. No, I don't know. Probably no. too embarrassed. Like you got to hold on to it like you're shoving that battery up uh, your ass. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and you gotta I, hold on to it so you don't lose it. D cell? Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> nine, nine volt. <laughs> then, you, then you have someone lick it. <laughs> That's also a subgenre of pornography. If anybody's curious, <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to share a link. Yeah, <laughs> I invented it. Uh, if you like to purchase it, let me know. <laughs> uh, let's see. I feel like very clunky was the the pole vaulting in that you have to. Run, get gain speed, hit your pull in, and then press like forward and up to launch, propel yourself, go over a dinosaur onto a bed of rocks. Yeah, <laughs> it is fun raising and lowering the dinosaur's neck though at the beginning. Yeah, it's gonna be t- tilting it with t- tasing it with the meat or t- teasing it, tasing, <laughs> 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 just tasing it with the meat all day. My meat taste. <laughs> Caveman Games Dinosaur Tasing Simulator. <laughs> It's kind of like Turok, but awful. Yes, <laughs> yes but so like he... Turok too. <laughs> oh, I've never played a Turok game, guys, and it seems like it's the kind of game that I would have loved. You would have loved it. I think Turok Three was where it went really sad. There was a third then, one. Yes, there was a Turok, or there was a Turok Three and the Turok Evolution. I think there are like four of them on the N sixty four. So Far Cry Primal is essentially Turok New Generation, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. No, but 
I, I actually enjoy it. That's the, that's the one event that I think I, I went back to first, even before the mate toss, as much as I talk about the, the liking, well, like I said, when I was liking it when I was 12, but like picking right back up when I enjoy the dino vault. And because you're it, good at it. Well, yeah, it's what it is. So my, my thumb still has a little bit of speed to it. So, so you just got to make sure you just got to pretty much look like you're just, <laughs> just, just, just <laughs> having like shaking, an episode. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's pretty much all you got to do is just like put your mind in there, just have an episode for like 10 seconds and just remember when to hit B. So, yeah, it's not fun. It's um like the mini games in this because this is a series of mini games. It's six mini games. It's like it's like the shitty WarioWare, mm-hmm. uh, and it's like you <laughs> super uh, shitty WarioWare. Su- like, yeah, I mean, like, look, I love how shitty WarioWare is. Like, it's shitty on purpose, but it's like it's one of those things where it's like I don't know, man. Four out of six of these mini games involves rapidly pressing A. Yeah, yeah. and then it's like. I know you've only got so many buttons, but like, <laughs> let me do something different. Like in every race, every time you're running, you're rapidly pressing A. Yep. So it's like in the saber race, you're rapidly pressing A. The dino race, you're rapidly pressing A. Those two are essentially the same events. Even in clubbing, I'm rapidly pressing A because usually all I'm doing while other people are trying to bonk each other on the head, I'm just trying to hit your foot the whole time because that's all I want to do. Yep. So I feel like the worst is probably building a fire. See, I, I ended up enjoying building a fire. No, well, I mean, the worst for having to oh, for press, press A. a. Yes. Yeah. Because you got to press A. I, I thought, okay, so as far as like originality goes, I thought making a fire was actually pretty good. It's thematically appropriate. It is. Like, and like, I guess all of them are kind of thematically appropriate, but I mean, like, just the fact that it's Except like. Except for the fact that cavemen weren't around the same time as dinosaurs, but. You know what? They've what actually gone back on that scientific. Oh, really? Thing. Oh, yeah. Wow. We lived. I mean, have you been to the museum here in Kentucky? Oh, no. yeah. We the, the girls have. I have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we lived with Their dinosaurs. Their grandfather took them to the to the ark. <laughs> Did you know? Uh, but I don't know. The, the making the fire is like everything else. Like the racing and the clubbing, vaulting are all like very like Olympic style events. Even the mate toss is like yeah. essentially the discus throw. But fire making is the one oddball where it's like, oh, this is kind of like I don't know. It's kind of like oh, I our- must make man's red flower bloom. <laughs> right? Hey. Yeah. Exactly. And I think it's the most fun to play two player when you're trying to like bonk the other person over the head as they're trying to, you know, go down on the on the fire. So <laughs> that is so, the, that is until the best you, part. You did get dizzy or get bonked in the head, and then yeah, I think my record in that was like 22 seconds. So you got to go for this. You got to go for the speed run before I'm gonna I have submit to. mine. I'm gonna have to. I'll give it a shot. So get, let me have third at three hours for like just <laughs> at least a day. So I can tweet it but out. I'll give it a shot. So I've, I've just got to get a setup to to properly a, a rig that can run this properly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you gonna play? Are you gonna play the? My Commodore current potato s- is far too old. <laughs> <Potato>. <laughs> you gonna play the NES version? Have oh, you ever played the? Have you ever played the Commodore sixty four? No, 64 never version? have. I knew of it, but I never played it. You need to play it and report back. <laughs> okay. And let us know <laughs> how it is. I'll just find a Commodore sixty four somewhere and. I hear the um, monitors are really good. Edge Lord for- Caveman, Kyle Bertel. <laughs> 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 uh, well, what, what else do we want to talk about? Oh. My caveman games, the uh, dinosaur hurdles, essentially, oh, where you're riding dinosaur- on, where you're riding and then jumping over obstacles in the back of a dinosaur. Oh yes, because you got to make sure you if you club your dinosaur too many times, you get them confused, and then they start to go backwards and forwards, and then you uh, lose your place in yeah. the race. You can only so. dunk you much dinosaur so many times. Oh yeah, I've always said that. So, but I see a lady. <laughs> you Do you guys Kylie? know that Ringo Starr played a caveman in a movie? Yes. No, I, I didn't know. I think it's in the called Caveman, or I think it's. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. I've never seen it, but it is called a toque. Oh. A T O U K. Oh, okay, I had no <laughs> clue. I I had I'd heard of it. There you go. There's okay. a photograph of him being kissed by I guess uh, some kind of like Venus flytrap thing. Ah, Audrey three. Mm-hmm. Or I guess pre Audrey, proto Audrey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if Thag is a Far Side reference, but there is a Far Side comic from like 1982. Where they talk about the 
the okay, the spikes on a stegosaurus's tail mm. are <laughs> called thagomizers. Oh. <laughs> so the far side comic, these are all from like a, a blog post on on mental floss. And I'll I'll have a link to that in the show notes. But like that's where I found the Ringo Star thing and this whole thag thing. But again, thag thing. I was like, I really gotta <laughs> lean into that TH. Um the the there is a caveman presentation. Where uh, a caveman, let me just explain this comic to everybody mm-hmm. in this yes. audio format. I always love Dave explains yeah. the far side. Yeah. Dave goes to the far side. New show <laughs> segment. <laughs> uh, there is a caveman presenter pointing at a stegosaurus's uh, thagomizers, and he's saying, Now this end is called the thagomizer after the late Thag Simmons. Oh. <laughs> remember, remember when uh, we read the far side? Yeah. I like the far I side. I love the far side. Like, I remember my my aunt had the the collection, the large like black one with the uh, the bones of a dinosaur in the front. Yep. Oh, I read the shit out of that. Yep. That was the original get covered in piss in the bathroom book. Yay! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, what was a uh, Wiener Dog art was I think yep. one of them. I had Wiener Dog art. Uh, the Far Side was great. I don't know if I don't know. I haven't revisited it, so it's like other than this Thag Simmons one that I just mm-hmm. read. I don't know if it holds up or not. Yeah, I think they I would, would. Yeah, I, yeah, certainly better than Caveman Games would. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> anything. I would better. say Gary Larson holds up <laughs> yeah. better than. I'll, 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 I'll put a quarter on that yeah. one. <laughs> all right, all right, that's fair. If you lose, you have to eat another piece of t- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles gum. <laughs> I'll, I'll be safe in winning this game. <laughs> so, mm. I'm trying to make this game more exciting, but like I said... It's all right. It's, it's not. It's fine. It's just a no. bad It's just a bad game. It really is. <laughs> it's well, just I, a bad I, game. I just, I'm going back to when I was 12 and going, what made me love this so much? And what, I mean, I don't say, what made me like this so much and think this was a good game? Because it's like I, how in Call of Cthulhu, you have to trick your own mind into staying sane. You didn't want to know that you'd wasted $60 and that much work, so you had yeah. to trick yourself. Oh, no, this is great. No. I love this. Well, like I said, and I wasted two months of my money that I saved up for every week just to play this game. We all make poor investments. Yeah, this was a, this was a very bad one. Yeah, uh, I'm going to wound you. All right. So I just want to prepare you. Okay. It's not It's not to hurt you. It's just I'm letting you know uh, that I do think that this game is better than Wall Street Kid. That's okay. Uh-huh. I had I had more fun with Caveman Games than I did with Wall Street Kid. That's okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I also had more fun with Color a Dinosaur than I did oh. with Caveman oh. Games. <laughs> I really I did. I get it. K- like, Color a Dinosaur was a fun one to get a little fucked up and do a stream. Mm-hmm. That, like, that, that totally makes sense. Uh, so, should games. we have a prehistoric series where we, because we've done Joe and Mac, Joe and Mac 2, Color of Dinosaur, Caveman <laughs> Games. What else is there? Mm-hmm. Bonk. 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 We have several Bonk. 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 Bonks games. So the you Adventure do... Island games. Oh, uh, I don't uh, know. He's like Professor. He's on an there. island, but he's, mm. yeah, he's not caveman-ish, so. Uh, there is another cave, there are other caveman games, I just can't oh, remember. Oh, Prehistoric Man that prehistoric Brian man. wants us to play. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm sure there was an Encino Man SNES game. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh. But that'll fall under our Brendan Fraser series that we'll have. Yes, to do, which so. yeah, inevitably <laughs> includes uh, the Mummy and maybe other movies he's been in that I don't know. Of. Monkey Bone. Uh, he was in Monkey Bone. Was oh, there really? a Monkey Bone game? <laughs> there should uh, be. I bought this. <laughs> I'm sure there's not. <laughs> I remember the I remember the box office numbers for that one. It was, was real bad. Was real bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so his mm. I guess it was his brother who was in Mallrats, right? So no, that, that was the London brothers. Oh, that was yeah. the London brothers. Jeremy You're and right. Jason London. You're 100% so. right. Landon, whatever it was. Yeah, London. Land- Landon? Land- <laughs> I'm going to go London. So. All right. You go London. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what else are we going to talk about? What are the other games we haven't mentioned? I mean, there's a Anything? lot of games. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic. We haven't talked about other, Sonic. What are the six caveman <laughs> minigames? That's uh, which that, ones would not talk about? Uh, Dino the, racing, the saber two, saber racing. That was the saber racing. That, that pretty was, much the same. Yeah, uh, like it's, I said, I'm trying to make them exciting. They're just that, they're not. No, that, <laughs> that's the one I hated the most. So that's why that's the one that I would struggle with trying to do the world record on. It's probably saber race. I just can't naturally get into it for some well, reason. Well, saber race fucking sucks because it's like um, you're supposed to be able to throw your opponent backwards. Yeah. So like. But I can never do it. It's like even when I mash the D-pad, like it got really frustrating because it's like 
I, there, there's a timing element to it, which is not described in the instruction manual, I feel like. Because it's like, right off the bat, every time my opponent would throw me towards the saber-toothed tiger. What you need to do is, when you, in, when you start, is either jump instantly straight up or try to jump and go to the right as you're doing it. Try to get a little bit of space behind the front guy and then but the problem is when you do that and then you throw him back it seems like you're losing all your speed so somehow he catches up and next thing he throws you back and then you're stuck being eaten by a fucking tiger and then you randomly stop to catch your breath yeah that's it just i wish i don't know if that is actually random or if it has anything to do with your inputs or what but that, i mean that might be because you're taught by other all the other games to button mash like this might be one of the few where you actually have to space it out a little more and not be as be more rhythmic. Yeah. Kind of exactly. like in the fire, the fire starting game. Yes. I don't know. I do wish that it, because I read the instruction manual. I had it pulled up on the other monitor while I was playing this game because it's like, there is absolutely no way I would know how to play this. You need the instruction yeah, manual for you, this you game. You really do. Like, because otherwise it's just like, I can't imagine renting this game. Not super intuitive. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I mean, it, hoping you had that that photocopy yeah. folded <laughs> up in the, <laughs> right. in the box. Well, that was the good thing about when I bought it is that I had the original manual. That way, I could go through it and take that uh, look and yeah. and learn those events. So, because you also had to learn the timing in the dino race, especially when you jump. Because if you don't have that timing down and know that you've got the slight delay when you hit the B button while you're doing it, you're just gonna tumble over every rock. Yeah. You're just going to get smoked by him. But that was a feature. Let's just let that all sink in. <laughs> <laughs> that was intended by design. Yeah. Did you guys have any achievements? Uh, I had a couple down. I got to look at my notes. Achievement so. Gladiator. I don't know. I should have had like 20 Chivos written Please. down. But, but the problem was when I started thinking about them, well, my 40-year-old went back to my 12-year-old brain and thinking about things like Ag, thag, mm-hmm. and going, oh, I probably shouldn't do a take on that. I mean, I thought about it, <laughs> but I, I also I also backed out of that one. So I was going to say, you know, hit Thag's full name. I'll let everybody fill in the blank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, my God, they got deleted from my notes. So I remember that one of them was everybody gets a turn on the spinner. <laughs> okay. And that's when you, you – that's – that's when you spin your mate around by playing as all six characters at one point or another during the game to spin your mate around. Um, I can't remember the other one. I'll let you all go so that way I can, maybe I can remember it offhand. Tyler, did you have any? Uh, my first one is Phil Hartman number one, and you unlock Phil Hartman number one, uh, so you have to keep clubbing your opponent in the fire starter mini game so they don't start their fire because fire bad. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Excellent. And Phil Hartman number two is your second achievement. Phil, <laughs> Phil Hartman number two is something else involving a caveman. I don't know. Something lore-ish. So he's just an honest cave. Just, just, a, <laughs> just a frozen just caveman. Appealing lawyer. appealing to the jury. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my, my second achievement was, Thag, you're it. Oh. <laughs> because I didn't want to go that direction. So yeah. I remember when, it, and that was winning all of the events with Thag as your, as your player. All right. Okay. I've got a couple that came in from Twitch chat. I don't have any of my own. I'm very unoriginal. Um, The first of which is Neolithic Neanderthal, and that comes from Zalnop on Twitch. Uh, In order to unlock Neolithic Neanderthal, you need to beat caveman games like a real caveman would into small pieces with a club. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And uh, Dig Dougie also had a similar achievement called uh, Giant Meteor for the Win, uh, turn this damn game off and assume that they were all wiped out by a giant meteor. <laughs> My favorite thing in this game is during the clubbing event, which is essentially a very bad fighting game, uh, there's a little meteor that goes that, that falls from the sky. And it's like, oh, that's a, that's mm-hmm. a nice touch in this game. <laughs> that is the nice detail yeah. that they added. Giant meteor for the win. That could also be used as achievement for Maniac Mansion. Oh yeah, yeah. I need to. I need to finish Maniac Mansion. I, <gasps> that's a game that I want to. I want to play on Twitch, and you need to. No one can talk unless they also have not beaten the game. Okay, well then I would just. Uh, that would just be three hours of silence then. <laughs> you think I, everybody has beaten the game? No, no. Oh, I would you, be. From yes, you. that's like I said. That's what I. These are the weird games I grew up with. Mm-hmm. So I love mm-hmm. Maniac Mansion. A lot of people love Maniac Mansion. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's one that I want to play and finish because I've heard great things about. Same I played for it a little bit. Do you have the tentacle? Yeah. 
I also hear amazing things about it. So I yeah. was never really into those kinds of games. No, my, I actually got my daughter into playing Day, Day of the Tentacle because it was either a free download or it was like a super cheap download on a PS4. So. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So it was nice to see after all these years that that style of gameplay was still relevant to them. I remember Reddit freaking out when they finally remade mm. that and released it. Yes. So. I've, I've got an achievement from uh, the diabolical bastard who sent us this game. <laughs> <laughs> Faceful of Alien Wing Wong, uh, who also streams on Twitch. You should check him out. Uh, the achievement name is A Pox on Humanity. In order to unlock a, po- a Pox on Humanity, you need to keep sending Tyler and Dave super <laughs> shitty games to play, which leads to a pandemic of shitty gaming everywhere. <laughs> I included that achievement because uh, he thinks a lot of people listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sheer pandemics work. <laughs> Well, I'm not guilty of sending one, but I'm guilty of suggesting one. So, <laughs> well, yeah, that is true. That is true. So I halfway fit to that category. Uh, this game had more music, had more songs in it than uh, Wall Street Kid. Yeah, I really like the music in this game. Honestly, it's just not in it a lot. Like they don't play music during the events. They no, play they music don't. in between the events, and then that's kind of that's kind of it. Because all you get used to in like that made talk. Right. It's like make your own music. Yeah, exactly. It's like the original the original Mario paint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the last achievement I've got uh, is Mighty Erectus. In order to unlock Mighty Erectus, you need to throw your mate 69 foots oh, and mate yes. toss. Yeah. And that comes from Nathan Eaton. Sex number. The sex number. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. That's all the achievements I all have. Right. All right. I have... Um, some questions. Okay. And if you if you like some questions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I want to know how much this game is on pricecharting.com. If you were to buy it loose, on average, what do you think you'd pay for it? Now, is this just a Tyler question or should I? Yeah, go ahead. Tyler first. All right. <laughs> I'm going to say 305. 305 from Tyler? All right. What do you think, Kyle? $9.64. Actual retail value of Caveman Games loose on PriceCharting.com at the time of this recording is $7.46. Ah. So we're using Price is Right rules. Technically, I went over. Technically, yep. I went over. Uh, you can also buy it new if you want for $149.99. No. There's a graded copy, $245.25. $5 a week, Kyle. Put it back. There you go. Nope. nope. Yeah, bring it back. I, I've made this mistake before. <laughs> make it again. No. If you make it again, it's funny. <laughs> make a podcast about it. Every week you check in and you're like, all right, I put about X amount of dollars towards a graded copy of Caveman Games. I'll just put up, yeah, I'll put up a website and keep track of my fund as it goes along. Yeah, so. that's perfect. Well, yeah. no, I'm sure you're GoFundMe. Start, so. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Buy a new graded copy. Uh, I'll even do the art for it. Oh my God. Get Kyle Caveman Games. <laughs> and it's a photo of you not holding caveman games. <laughs> You're holding another game up. Wall Street Kid. I dotted yes. line right. around it's it. It could be here. <laughs> uh, Tyler. Yes, Dave. I've had a lot of fun today mm-hmm. talking to, about all kinds of things caveman related. First ladies, second ladies. All the yeah, I forgot about even that. That was a nice little fun little road trip we took. But before we close things out. I have two very important questions for you. Mm-hmm. If you were to give Caveman Games a beard mm-hmm. that sums up how you feel about it, what kind of beard would it be? I would give it the the dripping sweat beard of Ralph Cramden as he bang pow sends his mate to the moon. Okay. Yeah. That's um probably maybe maybe not the first instance of domestic abuse in a TV <laughs> show. I don't know. It's kind of one of those where it's like I remember watching The Honeymooners as a kid and being like, this is funny. (laughs) (laughs) He hates that woman he's with. (laughs) Yeah, he is miserable. Uh, And now it's like, oh, yeah, that's probably not really a (laughs) – it's probably not good for kids to watch that. (laughs) Tyler. Yes, Dave. If you were to give this game a pair of glasses, Mm -hmm. that sums up how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. What kind of glasses would you give it? I would give it the the subtle reading glasses of one Tony Soprano – as he chokes the life out of various <laughs> strippers and women and all sorts of things. Because of his caveman-like violence? Yep. 
and resemblance of James Gandolfini <laughs> to a caveman. Man, yeah, they should have got him to play a caveman before he left. <laughs> he would be my p- pick for Caveman the movie. Oh, no, yeah. Danny DeVito? Danny DeVito is like a little like Neanderthal who. Supporting actor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up the strippers because that reminds me. I may need to make a stop at the Pussycat Lounge this week while I'm <laughs> while I'm down <laughs> for research. Stop for it. research. Stop yeah. at Fantasy World before you leave Paducah. Okay. <laughs> I I don't I did know. Think I, about that. I think it might be gone. Really? Because oh, now I saw there's just the big sign is no longer there, and they have a neon sign sitting out front that just says bar. Oh. oh. So I. Don't know what's going on there. That is a case of somebody needed to make a different business real yeah. fast. Because yep. like, I can't even think <laughs> yeah. of a name for a bar. Uh, bar. <laughs> is, that a, is that a cop car outside? We're a bar. No, we're, we're a bar. bar. Yeah. We're a bar. I assure you, <laughs> officer, we are a bar. You see this sign that says bar? I wouldn't have this if this wasn't <laughs> if a bar. Wasn't a bar. <laughs> That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> what? These prostitutes? Uh, I mean, <laughs> waitresses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a theme. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brothel-themed bar. <laughs> Man, we're just circumventing the law. I love it. So, so, so those what guys fan- in that room jerking off? No, 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 no. no, no. no. I was about to ask was like from dust till dawn. The I mean, sorry, yeah, but fantasy world, the modern day dust till dawn. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like uh, that that place was a lot nicer modern than fantasy day world. <laughs> dust. <laughs> yes. Oh, Do we have ten other questions? No, I don't. I don't have a quiz. We've got a oh. quiz. We've got a quiz from Matt for Smart Ball because we kind of okay. did things out of order. Uh, okay. We were going to do a Smart Ball episode, mm. so I, that's waiting in the wings. Yep. Uh, but we, I, we don't have a quiz for Caveman Games. Let's take some fucking calls, then, man. Want to take some Let's calls? Yeah, man. All right. All right. First call is from seven five seven. Although I paused because there is a transcription of a message that Saint Zach sent that starts out. <laughs> Sajak here. <laughs> oh man, Saint Zach is impersonating Pat Sajak. <laughs> yes, please. All right, next D and D game I play, I'm going to play as Pat Sajak. Um, first call is uh, from what did I say? Seven five seven. Yes, you did. My God, this thing is scrolling like crazy. All right, I'm being hacked. What's up, Tad Paul? It's your beloved Adam. Adam. This call is specifically and solely for Tyler Holland. We'll, uh, see, we'll see if it is, Adam. Kyle, you and I need to leave. All right. This is a call that is referencing a call that I made on December 8th at 4.50 p.m. when it was snowing and I was driving home from work when I worked in Richmond. And y'all were talking about the Final Fantasy game on NES. I was just really reminiscing about how amazing you guys are and... I guess I talked a little too much about Dave and not enough about Tyler, so I'm going to dedicate the next two and a half minutes just to you, Tyler. Don't don't fuck it up. And then it stopped. That's it. That's, that's all. That that's sense. that's all of the call. That makes it's sense. weird. I don't know. It's very <laughs> bizarre. I really do think that you are amazing. I like the the stories that you tell. I'm always amazed at how you can remember stories and things that have happened to you over the last thirty years. I like to tell stories. I'm a storyteller myself, and I have a handful that I remember and talk about, but your lexicon of stories about yourself is unmatched, and to me, that is something that I am jealous of, I'm excited by, and I love hearing your stories uh, from, you know, growing up and things like that, so you're a wonderful storyteller. You uh, are very funny. I don't care if you're Wife thinks that Dave is funnier. Uh, wrong. I say that respectfully. I believe that you guys are equally the same funny. And uh, I think that's why you match up so well, is because your sense of humors are on different sides of the pendulum at times. And it just makes for great uh, comedy in the podcast. And so um, you have uh, a wonderful disposition about yourself uh, in a way that I think that you like to make fun of people and things, but you also like to see the good in uh, in the same stuff that you would make fun of. I think you're an equal opportunity uh, joker, but you also just have a sentimental side about you. Maybe that's because uh, you've produced a child from your balls and now have a, a gaggle of girls that you take care of. And so I think that's just kind of softened you in to be a, a very friendly and kind man. And, uh, and, and so I, I like your whole personality is just wonderful. So, um, 
I think that you're funny. I think that you're handsome. I think that you look better than a handsome cartoon character. I think you look like a freaking movie star and, you know, probably a, a porn, but I think that Brian you probably want more porn <laughs> than real movies. So He's that's a huge character actor. in my book. So I would and have and will continue to jerk off to you, Tyler. So uh, I love you. Can't wait to talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you, Adam. Of you still talked about Dave too much, but well, it's fine. <laughs> I, I was mentioned. Uh, yeah, it is true. Exclusively to Tyler Holland. By the way, something about Dave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I was mentioned. You fucked up, Adam. Uh, we do have a follow-up call from Adam that looks like it's 16 seconds. So let's see what that's about. Also, Tyler, you have a go dick. Just wanted to let you know that. I'm going to be thinking about it Thank today. You. What's up, Chad Paul? Get your bullet, Adam. Tyler's got a big old dick. <laughs> Woo! A little Ric Flair at the end there. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Hey, good job. Yeah. Nice, nice pool, huh? Yeah. All right. That's, I've been on our Facebook group. <laughs> wrestling the <laughs> osmosis, yeah. Uh, let's see. We got another call. This is from, I believe, Terrified Michelle. Let's see what's going on with her. Hi, Tampon. This is Terrified Michelle again. I'm Hello. calling you on my Bluetooth from my new car. Um, Bragger. And <laughs> you guys hear a lot from me, but I can't help it. So, uh, I wanted to tell you a few stories. I, um, in the three minutes I have, I um, was listening to the All Calls episode on the way to work, the one where you're talking about Sophie the Giraffe and Indian oh, in the right. cupboard and... <clears throat> What toy would you want to bring to life and all that other shit? So, the indigenous person in the cupboard, please. <laughs> <laughs> One, Sophie the Giraffe. I know who she is. I'm in California. That bitch is expensive. I tried to buy her. I don't have to. I tried to buy her for numerous people's babies, and I'm all like, no, I could buy something bigger and better for the same price. Why would I buy a tiny giraffe? Somebody you else can't. Can that. <laughs> so, there's that. Uh, I wanted a, um, when I was a tween, I wanted a My Size 10, because My Size Barbie was a real big thing, for, and I wanted him to have uh, basically a heart on all the time. So that I could, yeah. <laughs> Wait. I want to make sure I heard that right. <laughs> First of all, a my size Ken was a real thing. Yes, they had the my size. I mean, really? I, I remember the my size Barbie, so it yeah. only makes sense they had the my size Ken. So, I guess it only makes sense that they had the my mm-hmm. size Ken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God, tell me about you fucking your my size Ken. Come on, yeah, come I know. on, Michelle. Please, please. And it doesn't count as fucking because he's an inanimate object. So basically, I wanted a sex doll, but I didn't know what a sex doll was at the time. <laughs> uh, all right, nice. Love My it. friend told me about a story. Janie is not in that car, is she? <laughs> <laughs> guy was like a uh, limo driver or taxi driver or whatever, and he picked up this woman, and he dropped her off at her hotel room. Well, he didn't drop her off. He was waiting for her, and he was waiting for her to come back, and she didn't, so he went to go check on her, and he opened the door, and she was like flinging this stuff out of her vagina. <laughs> And it smelled like a bakery. (laughs) (laughs) You know, cleaning it out, I guess, before she went to her next stop. I don't know. Mommy's making donuts. (laughs) What was wrong with her? I don't want to know. But I figured that was appropriate for uh, that punctuation. Fair. Kind of nasty. I think he left after that. I don't think he waited around for her to finish. Um, Coward. And let's see, my question is, since I've heard a bunch of Mary Fuck Kills, and I don't know if you've done this one, Mary Fuck Kill, Sansa Stark, Arya Stark, or Daenerys Targaryen. Mm, That's a good um, one. From the TV series, because I think they're all of legal age Mm. in the TV series. And maybe... thanks. Bye, guys. In Westeros, maybe they are all of legal age. I was about to say, i got to kill Arya because she's a little girl. Yeah, Arya's very young, yeah. You could try to kill her. Plus, she's the one most likely to kill me. So That is true. It pretty much it boils down to, am I going to marry Daenerys or not? And I think well, I... Well, I mean, Sansa still has Winter, Winterfell. Like, you can still get some land from marrying Sansa. Yeah, well, that's... And you can fuck Daenerys all day long without, a, you know, coming inside of that economy. She's not getting pregnant. <laughs> I mean, that is true, but I, I assume yeah, that, that in that, a... that horse baby done ripped all her guts out. Yeah. So she, that's not going to happen. Yeah, but can you live up to Khal Drogo? No. The answer is no. No. No man can. That's fine. I could be into board ignored. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could get one of those dragon dildos. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Love that shit. She might like that. 
I don't know. Then it's a challenge. Like, how can I, can I satisfy the Daenerys <laughs> oh, Targaryen? I thought it was a challenge. Like, can I convince her that this isn't incest? Because she is the mother of all <laughs> oh, dragons. Mm, it's true. <laughs> what do you think? All dragons or just those three? Oh, I don't know. Well, I guess those three is all there are, but. That's it. Mm. That's all of them. They got to make the mold from something, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can't just make up with a dragon. Oh, it's, what like. is it? When I first got onto Reddit, uh, one of the very first posts I saw was a like a confession bear about a girl who heard her parents talking about how her dad made a dildo out of his own cock for yes. his mother. She, whenever they weren't home, went into their room, got it, and she used it. That's on her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, oh, that's not like accidentally like yeah, finding yeah, yeah. a oh, Purposely. Oh, yeah. Purposely doing yeah. it. That's a good confession, Bear. <laughs> Everybody was like, good use of the meme. Thank you. <laughs> Everyone was like, BRB. <laughs> uh, picks, please. <laughs> picks are <didn't> <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, Arya, I gotta kill Arya because yeah, she is a little girl. Yep. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna. I think I'd marry Daenerys when you're done. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Because uh, otherwise, it'd be weird. I get lubed up for you. It's yeah. Fun. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> great. <laughs> you can piggyback on my water slide. It's excellent. Fine. Excellent. That's you know, that's all I asked for. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, wait. I need a good and gooshy, bro. Come on. <laughs> I don't, this, is, this isn't my field of expertise, I'll admit, so I'm a little bit. Uh, <laughs> All right. You're, this, I, so you haven't seen like Game of Thrones? You mean fucking a whole no, full I, of I, is not your expertise? <laughs> no, I've been told to for the last seven years, but I still have not made my way. Well, I was with Bree and. She said, you, fuck my whole full of cum no, for seven well, years? Well, well, I mean, I, I did do that often enough, but... Oh, it's still your cum. Okay. Yeah, so that's not, not, okay. not someone else's cum, but... <laughs> yeah, but got, is, got a surprise! <laughs> this isn't gooshy at all. <laughs> no, but I, I had to make a lot of uh, television show selection. Well, I had to make a lot of sacrifices when it ever came because she controlled the remote, so it was a, a lot of... Big Brother and Survivor uh, and Teen uh -huh. Mom 2 and shows that I never, <laughs> ever should have watched and never, ever would have watched, except sure. for the fact that's what she loved. Mm -hmm. And Game of Thrones got pushed to the back. So did the amount did the amount of titties in Game of Thrones have anything to do with it? No, because uh, I know no. that's a turn that's a turn off. No, because some, she loved True Blood. People. Okay, and that had some titties. Uh, so. Yeah, all over the place. That's exactly. True. So that right. wasn't a factor. No, I, I used to go to the strip club with her when. She was the one who dragged me to a strip club a couple of times. So, like the first time we went to Trixie's in Louisville. She's like, don't be such her. a thag. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Enunciate, please. Thag. Thag. The caveman, well, who, the hates caveman who hates strip, strip clubs. clubs. He's, a Bible <laughs> belt. He's a Bible belt caveman. <laughs> that can lead me to my other story. Thag that I Falwell. He later produces <laughs> Jerry Falwell. Go ahead and get them all. This is the only episode we could do it. <laughs> it's, we can't do it out of context. Well, this can go back to my other story, speaking of Brie, where I, the other story that I could have told, which was how I met the, my, the future mother of my children by telling her I was gay. <laughs> so, <laughs> true story. It happened uh, November of 1996. This is how it happened. So, I'm going in, she, I'm working at KB Toys at the time, and it's during Tickle Me Elmo the season. The toy store, uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, so Jacob used to also work there. <laughs> so this girl comes. So this girl comes in, and her and her friend are coming in because they're asking for a tickle me Elmo. And of course, we don't have a tickle me any tickle me Elmos because we got two cases of them, and all the employees bought them uh -huh. and went and sold them. So yeah. yep. we went and made our own money off of it, which yes was wrong, but. Eh. Yeah. Maybe unethical. I don't know if it's wrong. <laughs> but, Invisible hand of the market, baby. Come yeah. on. Well, it's anyway, capitalism. anyway, when they're coming in asking for a Tickle Me Elmo, uh, one of the guys is like a 40-year-old dude who this is his second job trying to make a little bit of extra money. Uh, and the other guy... I like to think that he got the job just to get a Tickle Me Elmo. <laughs> yes. He's like, he's like, all right, I'm going to start in October. <laughs> I'm going to plot this out. Uh -huh. so, and the other guy who they're hitting on these two girls at the time when they're coming in asking about the Tickle Me Elmo uh, is dating a girl who's actually up at the front register while he's doing this. So needless to say, it's a little bit creepy to me. <laughs> so I... So they so somehow they wanted to interject me into the conversation. And like my goal is to blow it up for them. So somehow I just snap, like, what can I do on an instant? I went into this gay man routine and I just 
just butchered their game. I mean, they turned around within like 15 seconds and left. And I just looked at the two and said, get the fuck back to work. And I just turned back to my, just turned back to my aisle and start putting up stuff on the inventory. Five months later, my friends James and Joe keep telling me about this girl named Brienne. They said, you've got to meet her. She's so outgoing. She's so funny. You've got to meet her, this girl. And I'm like, okay, and they're, and they're telling her back on the other side, you got, you got to meet Kyle. He's so different. He's so out there. He's so funny. He just kind of says whatever is on his mind. And then, so it's like, okay, we finally range it. We finally go, we're going to meet at the bowling alley. So I pick up Joe after work. We go to the bowling alley. He goes in there, and then to let them know, let Bree know that we're here. I, I'm doing something out in the car, so I kind of wait outside. Masturbating. Uh, that was... Uh, <laughs> got a fluff where you go in. Yeah. Exactly. And no, that was earlier in the day. <laughs> <laughs> you got a pregame, so just in case things go. You're talking like you can only do it once. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I got to map it out a little bit better All now right. that I'm 40. At, at eight, at, <laughs> I was 18 at the time. Yeah, I mean, I could. I had plenty of room, I, plenty of opportunities to go. Anyway. Um, they come outside. They go for about three or four steps, and all of a sudden, she dart. I don't even have to fully see her. They dart back inside, <laughs> and all of a sudden, Joe's like. Apparently, this is why I hear happened later. Joe's asking him like, "What's wrong? Why can't you see us? I can't go out with him. I can't talk to him. He's gay." They're like, "What the? They're like, what the hell are you talking about?" And James and she's explaining to James and Joe the whole thing that happened to KB Toys, the whole thing that I did to them. They just looked at her and said, "Yeah, that's Kyle." <laughs> go, 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 me him. <laughs> and then, and then we ended up making out that night. So, so, and then I think we've, I think I fingered her the next day that she came yeah. over to my house. So, nice. there we so, go. Yeah. There yeah, we so, go. So, within 24 hours, I Good went from bug fingered yeah. story for a exactly. while. And I gotta say, country fingering. I knew we, I, I knew we draw it out. <laughs> <laughs> nope. But yeah, because I'm trying to think. Yeah, that was the next day. So. <laughs> So yeah, that's just how it worked. <laughs> and then we dated for a few months, and then it just well, she saw you bowl, so she was like, "Those fingers are good." Yeah, yeah. yeah I had them in these holes. Yeah, yeah my fingers. Yeah. My, 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 just two fingers. They work pretty well. So <laughs> a second and third finger. All right. So all right. That's, that's a, a that's a bowl strategy, Cotton. That's <laughs> interesting technique. So I just whatever ones you want to choose. So those are my go. <laughs> those are my go. Dealer's choice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! Uh, yeah, because so. you bowl with those two, so it's either the thumb or those two. Doesn't make yeah. sense, yeah. Or you yeah. can you can turtles it the three. Yeah. Three. <laughs> oh, that sounds like you're going like two and two and the end of that. So there you go. Uh, the Spock shocker. The Spock, yeah. I don't find I don't find find many that enjoy a two and two. So it's, it's more of a it has to be a two and one. So three and one or you know, fist whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah whatever works uh, I'm three like, and one yeah I'm not gonna judge oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's <laughs> like <laughs> I gotta go where am I gonna go with this call? you wanna take another call <laughs> no it isn't. It, yeah it's totally fine <laughs> <laughs> what's that a yes or a no yeah that's oh, fine okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little round let's take another yeah, call yeah, he's, all right <laughs> it might be a good time Kyle's, Kyle's on the ropes <laughs> Uh, this is coming in from 270. That is a local area code for us. Spoilers. Hello, Tad Pog. This is Taryn Landon. What's up, Taryn? Hope you are doing wonderful today. You sound drunk. I am on my around 12-hour journey home to western Kentucky. Um, I was supposed to be coming in for my first Limp Biscuit show Limp in Biscuit. almost... Mm. 12 years, maybe 13 years. I'm not sure on the timeline, but it's been many years since I have seen Limp Bizkit. And it was going to be in Louisville, Kentucky. And they have since canceled the festival due to heavy, heavy rains and flooding at the park. Um, but anyway, I'm catching up on some sad fog. And I don't even know why I call anymore because every call is Adam. No offense, Adam. Shots You're very fired. entertaining. Uh, and also... There's not been calls played except for maybe like one every other show. Uh, but I am going to call you guys a couple more times while I am driving because I'm just going to. Okay. That's how it's going to happen. So uh, this is a long drive, and I want to I want to call and say hello and catch up. And hopefully, hopefully, we're recording the show while I'm in this weekend. I don't and know I'm if that sure happens. I'm pretty sure we're going to do all calls because I'm not the only one, I think, bitching. 
about the call situation. Uh, and it's not like a big on y'all or anything. I'm just, I'm just telling you people enjoy the phone call. Um, anywho, you have mentioned... You're just saying that because Adam filleted you for <laughs> yeah, two minutes. Yeah, of, uh, of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I'm trying to figure out... I think... I don't know. I think I think Taryn might have something against micro penises. That's my that's my <laughs> yep, that's yep, my guess. Yep. <laughs> she only likes the macro penises. <laughs> <laughs> the world four of penises. <laughs> yeah. So four four or five, can't remember. Bring it in the mic. <laughs> At the beginning of this episode, um I don't know what game you're playing. It's something about shiny, shiny something. Um, <laughs> shiny forces. Uh, the one where you're talking about your shiny Pokemon? Something? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was probably Shining Force. You had mentioned about my uh, food not touching, and that is very accurate. Um, I still to this day do that. I have done that since I can remember. I also eat one thing at a time. So food can't touch, uh, and, and, you know, like if I get a plate of veggies or whatever at my Grammy's house, my plate is not David the Dome. It is actually a gigantic flower shape. Uh, it's what you serve, like, uh, vegetables and dip in at a, at a party or at a, <laughs> at a... What is it? Crudite. Crudite? Mm -hmm. That sounds like a, uh, that sounds like a finishing move in D&D. &D. Yep. Also. <laughs> oh. oh, is he incapacitated? I'm gonna crudite. Crudite. Oh, I was thinking of kumite, so I was <laughs> totally different on the brain. We're all on a different wavelength. It's a Van but my Grammy bought it for me because my food doesn't touch, but it's shaped like a big flower. Uh, it's not David's and I wish it was. And, uh, yeah, I don't don't let my food touch, and I eat one thing at a time. Um, I think some of that stems from I have very slight OCD. It's more than slight, but I think part of that is ingrained in me. That's why my food doesn't touch, and I eat one thing at a time. Still do that. I'll probably do that until the day I die uh, or until I can no longer comprehend that my food is touching. But anyway, I hope I talk with you guys soon, and uh, I'll call you back whenever I have another question. I'm sure something will come up. Um, can't wait to see you guys. Talk with you later. Weird hill to die on, but okay. Yep. <laughs> I will not let my food touch until the day I die. <laughs> All right. It's a big deal. Good for her. I don't remember a question in that, but... There wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think there was a question it's in the there. the next one from Taryn as well. Uh, she promised she's going to call a couple more times on this trip. She does call again, but it is... We have another call. Amazingly, we have another call in between her two calls. All right, so. let's do it. This is from 812. Oh, it's Adam. I wanted to be Adam. Yes, he has a, a like he's this, this is the episode where we learn that Adam is psychic and he has a rebuttal for Taryn. Oh, eight one two, I know who this. Okay. Hey, what's up, Tad Pog? I figured I'd give you guys a break from Adam calling all the time. Uh, it's Brooks from uh, well, guest host on Experience Grind from time to time. What's up, Brooks? Frequents your stream. And and Brooks is gone. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Brooks oh, called. It was nice it. seeing him. So there we go. Thanks, Brooks, for calling. And it does not look like he called us back. Yeah. <laughs> That's the one I actually would have guessed because it was either going to be Ryan, Kyle, or Brooks, and just because of the area code. And I actually and I never hear Kyle well, or Ryan. It, call, it wasn't so. going to be Ryan, so it was either Kyle <laughs> or Brooks. <laughs> uh, uh, Taryn called back at least twice. Do you oh, want to good. see? All right. Yeah. Want to see if her food touches finally? Yeah. All right. Hello, Chad Fogg. Karen here again. I am on about hour five and a half to six of my drive home, so halfway, almost halfway there. And here's a fun fact. Um, my drive, over half of it, it's about 12 hours to my mom's house in western Kentucky, almost seven to seven and a half hours of it. So over half is spent getting out of Texas. Um, Big old state. I don't even hit Arkansas until about hour seven, seven and a half. So that's just a little fun fact. But I just listened to the end of some, the shiny, shiny board. <laughs> got I don't it. Know. She got I, it. You got it. Sometimes I don't know the games. Uh, I definitely don't know that game. But I did enjoy the Star Wars chat at the end of the game uh, when you guys took an Adam phone call. Shocking. And uh, I could not agree with Dave Moore, which, Tyler, go ahead and close your ears. Yeah. Tyler, your ears closed? Yeah, it's all closed off. All right. I don't remember what the fuck we were talking about at the mm -hmm. end of the Shining Force no. about Star Wars. So 
Hopefully Darren gives us a little context, otherwise uh, I'm going to be lost. You won't be able to tell us because your ears are closed. I can see it. What? Right. Yeah, we're good. Oh, free to text, whatever. Um, because I'm going to talk about Star Wars for a minute. I am a Perfect. fan of Star Wars. My entire family is a fan of Star Wars. And I listen to another podcast, sorry, uh, but I do. I listen to another one, and it's called Defunct Land. And it's about the theme park industry, and it's a lot of cool stuff about the history of theme parks. And they go into a lot of different things. But I was listening to the end of your podcast and then had started Defunct Land, and it got me thinking from a theme park standpoint. It got me thinking. This other podcast is so much better than Tad Pog. <laughs> it's got less Adam. They got like no calls from Adam. It's got less Adam, and I've fucked anybody that comes on the show. <laughs> they don't talk about Shiny Force on this, <laughs> on this show. Which, you know, Star Wars could be in some trouble because I agree with Dave pretty much. Like, I didn't think Solo was that great. Um, I thought it was rushed. I didn't think it was the best thing that's ever happened. And if, since Disney now owns the IP, if they're going to pump these out just year after year, which thankfully they're taking time for the next one, uh, I have no idea what the next one's about. I've heard it might be about um, Obi-Wan? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, but I, I, don't, I have no clue. Or maybe Boba Fett? I've heard a couple of different rumors. Uh, but they are going to take their time with the next one. But I'm sure you know that Disney is opening up a Star Wars world or Star Wars land. They're calling it Galaxy's Edge. But on this Defunct Land podcast, you know, they're talking about what if the Star Wars fans, which I'm not saying this will happen, it's always going to be a classic, but what if it burns out a little bit? And, I mean, Disney is pumping billions, billions into this theme park, uh, and they're putting it in uh, Hollywood Studios, which needed some help. And... What happens if in like 15 years they've not made their money back, or they're, they're you know they're going to make ah, well that's stupid they're probably going to make their money back, but what if it's not bringing in money anymore because Disney has rushed out these Star Wars films? That'll never happen because people will spend billions and billions of dollars just to go in there to tell you how fucking burnout they are of Star Wars, and then spend the next few billion dollars just to let you know oh we got to do right here and. And then talk about how disappointed they are about that, too. I know that, like, since, I guess since Taryn left this call, like, Disney has slowed their role on the on the Star Wars movies. Because I know Obi-Wan, the, the Obi-Wan movie was going to happen. And then after Solo did not perform well, they're like, we're going back to, we're going back to just the, the main storyline. Yeah. I don't know how long it's going to be like that. I prefer it that way. There is something about a Star Wars movie coming out every year that kind of sucks. It it, no, feel, I, it it doesn't feel special. Like I I don't remember exactly what I said about Solo. I thought Solo was a fine movie. I thought it was okay, but its problems the problems with Solo were that you knew how everything was going to end. You exactly. you knew that Han wasn't going to die. You knew that he was going to meet Chewbacca in this movie. You knew all like the beats before going in. What was cool about Solo was essentially they proved that they can do. A, they can do a Western in the Star Wars universe. And yes. I thought that was really neat. Uh, that's what I want to see more of. I'd love to see like a horror movie set in the Star Wars universe. Cause I like the, the, the last scene of, um, Oh God, what was it? The Vader scene. Um, drawn blank on the movie or yeah, I Rogue am. one or yeah, it was, it was Rogue one. Thank okay. you. Yeah. The very end of Rogue one, uh, that scene with Vader in it, like proved to me that it's like, yeah, you could do, you could make a horror movie in star Wars and, for Ro sure. and Rogue one was such a pleasant surprise. And it was a surprise because it had been so many years. They've gone outside of the format of the, here's the episodes. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking back to the eighties and the God awful stuff they did there, but that they went outside the format, of the ep these episodes and here's this movie and it's really good. You, you, but you can't rep, keep replicating that. So. There's some of the magic is lost. I think exactly. it's it feels like a, a Madden franchise or something when yes. they're pumping out a Star Wars movie every year because it's like there's no build up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there's just like well, you know, if this one sucks, I guess there's the one that's coming out next year. It's different than when like I was a kid and it's like oh no, these are the three movies. Like that's it. And it's like there's always rumors about oh George Lucas has written yeah. all of it. It starts it, it starts with episode four because he's written three other movies. That, and I remember even being a kid, being like seven years old, and like hearing on the playground where it's like 
did you know that episodes one, two, and three came out when our parents were kids? And it's like, <laughs> we had no way of looking this shit up. And it's just like, yeah. Just but like, only I'm, in a theater in North yeah. Carolina. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. You pick, up, yeah, you pick up your hoverboard, you ride it to the movie, and then you watch it. So, yeah, it's kind of one of those where it's like, I don't know, man. When I was a kid, Star Wars movies felt special. Now they don't feel special anymore. As special anymore. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of factors for that, I think. But one of those factors is the fact where it's like, yeah, we're just going to make a movie every year. No, totally. Um, Taryn actually got cut off. She does call back immediately after. Um, let's see what she's got to say. Hey, Taryn again. Sons of bitches. That thing just hangs up on you at three minutes. Three minutes, baby. I did not realize that I had talked that long already. Um, anyway, my point being is what if Disney has rushed all this Star Wars uh, hoopla and movies and Star Wars land does not go as well as they think? And that's kind of been the theme park buzz lately because Solo didn't do so great and a lot of people are worried about the next film and that, you know, they're trying to just put the money back in their pockets and pumping these films out. And from a theme park standpoint, was that the best decision? Now, I am trying to rack my brain about Disney-owned properties that another kind of IP that they could put into Disney, but a lot of Disney fan hearts, which I am not, I mean, Disney World's okay, Disneyland's fine, whatever, I don't sweat it, I don't, it doesn't make my dick hard or anything, like, it's fun, but I don't, I don't go gaga over it, but I was trying to think about, you know, what else does Disney own that they could put in that's such an IP, but a lot of Disney people are like, we don't want it to become universal and just be theme land, theme land, theme land, theme land. We want everything to be Disney Disney World or Disney Land. But anyway, that's a whole other three minutes of chat. Um, <laughs> my question to you guys is, mm. do you have any thoughts on any kind of land, whether it be Disney, Universal, whatever, that you would like? I know they're putting in Nintendo World very soon, I think within the next two to three years. Uh, at Universal, I believe, and I think that would be great. I think a Shrek world would be amazing, amazing, amazing. Now, Japan has a ride, I think, or maybe like a smaller version, but I think a full-fledged, far, far away, like total dupe on Disney World, where they kind of were making fun of it, would be hilarious. Uh, And Shrek is still a fantastic film. It is one of the ones that I can watch all of the series and, and laugh at everyone. But anyway, do you have any? All of them? All of the Shreks? Oh. All of the Shreks? I've only seen the first two. All of the Shreks? No, no. I know no. out it too, man. Well, I mean, Taryn truly believes Shrek is love. Shrek is love. Shrek is. Well, yeah, we, I, that is that is law. I got yeah. to three, and no, the, the, the joke just wears thin after. I feel like the. God, I feel like such a critic here when it comes to these. <laughs> it's okay. I'm to roll my eyes on. We can be critical of Shrek. I think. Yeah, it's okay. I think that's. Fair. We're only going to offend Taryn. Uh, who we've already offended because we called an Adam. We played an Adam call, so we're 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 <laughs> fine. Thoughts on a theme park land that you would like to see, and uh, this thing's about to hang up on me again. So uh, hopefully, see you guys soon, and I'll call you back whenever I have another thought. Probably be about roller coasters, or theme parks, or anything to do with that. Uh, okay, talk to you later, bye. Thanks, Darren. Thank you, Darren. I would like to have seen an idea they scrapped which was a a dark Disney, a part of the theme park dedicated entirely to all the villains. Oh, yeah. Oh, that does so, sound good. I hate that they scrapped that. I think that's brilliant. That's what I want to see. I Did thought they, dark Disney was like Disney after after dark. After dark. <laughs> so fuck like, fuck top, Disney. Yeah. Right? Everybody, <laughs> You're right. Topless mini. Just like, furs, around, just right? furs yeah. their dicks out. Just... Well, yeah. Is it because they were worried about scaring the kids or is it they worried Possibly. that they weren't going to bring cuz I think the adults would be fascinated by mm-hmm. that but that's the problem it's such a fa- family oriented place that they they the adults are wanting to sneak away and get over there whenever the mm-hmm. kids weren't there so I love the villains as a kid man like they were my favorites oh, in yeah. Disney movies. Villain songs are usually the best ones. Yeah man and it's like they're the interesting characters mm-hmm. because like they are the only characters exactly. in the movies that are flawed you know like yep. like I feel like everyone else is like perfect, and it's like, well, that's fucking boring. I want, I want to care. I'm interested in a character that's like, oh, well, he has like, 
he sets the action in motion because he or she um, has some belief, has mm-hmm. like some kind of personality where it like kind of it's the crux of the movie. Yep. Yeah. Hot take here. I absolutely hate the movie 101 Dalmatians. But what's the one thing that I can remember from it? Cruella de Vil, Cruella mm-hmm. de Vil. You know, coming in and that that song, this is like you're talking about that when she's coming in and just that that yeah, that character, that personality as the one thing that I can fully remember from it. So You didn't like the scene in 101 Dalmatians where the one of the puppies is is dying and they put him in a towel and rub him and bring him back to life? <laughs> uh, no. Man, all right. I like. I haven't seen 101 Dalmatians in like <laughs> a really long time, but I loved that movie as a kid. So it's kind of one of those where it's like, does it hold up? I don't know. I'd like the intro where, the, where like um, the owner of, what's I don't remember the name of the main Dalmatian, like Pogo or something like that, pon, pon, Pondo, <laughs> something uh, yeah, like that. S- spotty. Sp- it's not Spotty. <laughs> that's one of the puppies, I think. See, that's, that's part of the movie, though. I don't remember any of that bit, but I, you remember Cruella de Vil. But in the very beginning, they're like, they're like his, the owner and the dog are like scoping out like the lady, like the owner scoping out the ladies and, and Pongo, I think maybe his name is, is scoping out the lady's dog. Daddy, and it's like, daddy. Like daddy, a, dog. daddy dog. <laughs> That's a different character. <laughs> Definitely from Dark Disney. <laughs> it's like it's goofy after dark, daddy dog. <laughs> or is it Pluto? There you oh, go. Wow. Kyle, uh, what what theme what, besides a Cruella de Vil uh, themed world? What would you like to <laughs> see, see? My brain instantly went dark, and I was thinking like Hellraiser Land or something <laughs> like that, where I, you're just walking around and a land full of chains <laughs> and pinhead people t- and trying and like being sucked into boxes. And <laughs> also Disney After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I would love a a horror movie theme park. I guess but I, I know this would start with Universal. I guess Universal would be a part of that because of the original Universal horror movies. But I, I would love to trace the history of horror yeah. that way. So and and include incorporate modern horror classics. So that's what something I'd love to go with, but in terms of how to put it together in a way that you can stay thematic throughout the history of horror might be the tough part. So I want to see um I would love to see look, I would love to see a Shrek theme park, an entire Shrek theme park, just so you could have a donkey punch game. But <laughs> what I'm really looking forward to is Sega over Six Flags uh, coming in 2021. Uh, that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, they're going to have a lot of rides like Sonic the Ride and Tails the Ride. Uh, and then you can put those rides, uh, either of those rides will go into a Knuckles the Ride. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, it changes the whole experience. <laughs> There's also an Alex Kidd ride that no one no fucking one goes in. No one remembers. Yeah. They ride it. They, they they leave and they're like, "What was that other ride that we did?" I what can't was remember. That? that was fun. Well, and of course, <laughs> you have to ride it first when you come in the the door. Me, that's first right. Thing you yeah, have you to have ride. to do. It. You have to do it in a specific <laughs> order. Yeah. Well, of course, there's going to be two teenagers that sneak behind the uh, the theme park, and one of them is going to get Knuckles the ride. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been there. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's good. We got one more call. You need one more? That's 27 oh. seconds. All right. And it's from Phil, uh, who sent uh, us, who sent us no. the horrible, horrible <laughs> bubble gum. So if you don't mind, I'd love to take that. Yep. Yes. I hope, God, I hope it's about, I hope it has something it to do be. with bubble gum as a diabolical lead in. All right, here we go. Here's the 57 second call from Phil. What is up, guys? This is Phil. Hey, Phil. Uh, it's been a while since I've called you, um, and I know you have said recently that the best way to combat the uh, atom backlog is to have everyone else call in just as much. So I am going to do my darndest to uh, do my part for Tadpog Nation and uh, call you as as often as possible with with relative and cogent uh, questions for you all. All right, I'm going to go ahead and scroll through and see how many times Phil has called <laughs> since he made this call. Not seen it yet. Not seen it yet. <laughs> Not seen it yet. Here's one from John Turley. Not seen it yet. Zach, Zach, Zach. Lots of Zach calls. And look, I am current, and I don't see any other calls for Phil. So, all right, Phil. Well, it's the thought that counts, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I have said that very same thing that Phil has. It's like I'm going to call in at some point. I'm really going to do it. And I made, I think I made one call. <laughs> oh, I had made one call that hung up on me apparently. So that was the that was the last phone call I made. 
I'm so. sorry that I'm sorry that the Tad Bog hotline hung up on you. <laughs> no, no, no. Apparently, yeah, I just it was my phone. There we went. <laughs> my darndest to uh, do my part for Tad Bog. Your darndest ain't very and, good. And uh, call you as as. <laughs> Oh. He did say darndest and not damnedest. So yeah. maybe that's like... That's comical. <laughs> right. Comical try. Exactly. Been as possible with, uh, with relative and cogent uh, questions for you all. So that said, my question for you all is, if you had to take a female Nintendo character and do a reverse Bowsette on her, that is uh, uh, turn her into an overly sexualized male caricature of herself, who would it be, and why is it the Lady Brutal? All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. <laughs> hmm. She'd probably have hmm. a carrot as a dick. <laughs> I mean, because I could say Laura Croft, but that's Nathan Drake. So, And not a Nintendo oh. character. Yeah. Oh, okay, Nintendo character. But I do sure, like, I, yeah. You could, do, um, you could do the Ice Climber twins, uh, and you wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> 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 Hmm, 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 hmm. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> Kyle, you got anything? Hmm, I had to sit here and think for a minute, too, because I've got to remember all my hot female Nintendo characters. That... They don't have to be hot, specifically, right? Well, not necessarily. It's hard to come up with female characters from uh, early Nintendo days. Yeah, I was going to grab, originally when I heard that, I was thinking of uh, Pr- Princess Tomato and the Salad Kingdom, so... Mm-hmm. Just Pauline, just be Paul. Paul. Yeah, just I brutal like dick Paul. Because then I could have be Prince I'm, Tom. Paul N E. I don't know. I'm yeah. trying to trying to work something Paul out. Paul N N E hole. You know, I'll go with Nancy from Maniac Mansion, maybe because I have that game on the brain. Okay. Just so that way I could turn just that way it would c- completely flip the way that the game would be played. Mansy. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd like so. to see um on the lines of Pauline, I think Rosalina would be really cool because Rosalina's Star like, Boy. Yeah. Star Boy. She is <laughs> yeah, she is the millennial she's the millennial princess. Mm. So I'd like to see the the millennial prince. Mm. Okay. That's what I want to see. All right. Yeah. Who is Star Boy? 100%. <laughs> All right. Thanks for never calling back again, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, you asked the question, and that's you really did. nice. You did. You called. You put, it, you put it yeah. in your one cent. Yeah. Thank you. All right. You guys have anything else? Nope. No. Caveman game sucks. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, I apologize to my 12-year-old self for, uh, <laughs> for remembering this game being fun. So, wow, that's 28 years I really... Uh, Stood on that flag and <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so with that you know, flag planted and said, "Yeah, this is a decent game." I'm sorry we ruined your childhood. It's okay. I've I've I, I've ruined your adulthoods too. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, could, uh, ma'am, could you please state the reason of divorce? Uh, caveman games <laughs> <laughs> Try, tried to throw me. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thanks for driving down, Kyle. Oh, Very yeah, much. welcome. Not it. a problem. So. I just all I had to do was work it out so that way I could take the company car from Elkhart to Louisville, then somehow take a half a day off for a personal matter, (laughs) and then go separately have Enterprise go pick me up so they could take me there so I could take the drive here. So is that all you had to do? That's all I had to do. I mean, I I had to plot it out in a particular way. It's like, how can we make this work? Oh, we have to do intercompany training with my manager. Oh, and. With my manager's currently there because he's still leaving at the end of March. So I'd like to see the flow chart that you built to get here. <laughs> well, I've got an interesting part to this, the, to the end of that too. So I don't even know if I want to tell that part. So <laughs> I got to really <laughs> think Company this one secrets. through. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. Well, that, well, that's maybe an after the podcast part. So. A bonus. It's a bonus. We'll put it behind the paywall. No, no, no. It's it's not for. It's not about me though. It's. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. All right. Now I'm intrigued. Okay. Okay. All right. Is it about me or Tyler? I wish, but no. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Oh, all right. Um. Well, thanks. Thanks everyone for listening. Uh, the next episode. I think we talk about it being smart ball. Yeah, we talked about being smart ball. I'm ready to I'm ready to roll. Yeah, smart ball, roll, smart ball. You like that? (laughs) We got a quiz from Matt. Yeah, so all right, right. let's do it. Uh, Let's see. Let's do it now. All right, you want to do it now? Cool. You want to make this a six hour (laughs) extravaganza? (laughs) Uh, Let's see what we talk about. Hey, you want to send us a package like like Phil sent this shitty gum wrapped in (laughs) turtle cards? (laughs) Wrapped in turtle cards. (laughs) 
Uh, you can send that to Tad Broad Studios, care of Nicole Nance, P.O. Box 3785, Paducah, Kentucky, 42002. We have a lot of packages. I've been holding on to them. Nice. Uh, Josh brought a whole bunch over uh, to my place when we recorded uh, Donut County. Uh, there are a lot of them. So uh, it's going to take us a little while to get through. I liked being able to listen to Tad Bog. It was, it was neat. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. That was a weird experience? Yeah. No, I liked it. I thought it was good. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You do a good show, Dave. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank so, you. I don't think Adam would agree with that. But Adam, he, no. loves, he loves you more. Yeah. You, you talked about you first, and then gave me a, a pity call. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm shaking. No, Adam and my wife both enjoy <laughs> you. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What else did we talk about? Uh, I don't even know. It's been so long. What do we, what do we promote? Tadpog Nation. You know, we got that on Facebook. Tadpog the page on Facebook. Uh, the on Instagram, Tadpog underscore podcast. I've been posting more stuff in there. It's mostly babies. So, <laughs> so, you know, we yeah. don't, that podcast about babies that we do. So, um, we did talk about doing a Tadpog Babies podcast a long time ago. That's true. And, and the reason I know that is because I was tagging an old episode. And like in WordPress, they will recommend tags. Like, and so I was typing in Tadpogs and Tadpog Babies popped up. And I was like, whoa, that's a, that's a blast for the past. Can you do it in the, like the theme of Muppet Babies though? So that way, I so that way, was. like you two, that's, yeah, that's okay, what it that's, was. Okay, good because then yeah. you two are like two of the main characters. You got like some of the guest hosts come out as like some of the other babies. And then... <laughs> We're just looking for excuses to wear diapers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you go damn right. <laughs> um, I don't know, what else do we do? I do Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Yeah, we're so. on Twitter. Yeah, we're on Facebook. You know how to find those things. Exactly. You can find us on Twitch if you want. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. You can call us if you want, Yeah, like some of these wonderful people did today, 270-883-2555. We do have a Patreon. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? Uh, If you did, please consider donating on Patreon. Um, A dollar pretty much gets you access to everything that we've got on there, which is, I don't know, probably like 20 bonus episodes and uh, a whole bunch of photographs of us with our waifu pillows that uh, mm, we just... Everybody seemed to really enjoy. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you to everybody who commented on that. Uh, that was really cool of y'all. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to thank a few people who have recently donated. Uh, and I also... Let's see. There might be some repeats here because um, on the Into the Breach episode that I did with Jacob, we did not know when that was going to publish. Uh, so I left that Patreon mm-hmm, stuff out of mm-hmm. that. Uh, let's see. I'd like to thank Exalted Lord Mike of Purdue for upping his pledge twice. Thank you very yes. much, Micah. <laughs> Riding that penny train. Uh, and I'd also like to thank Paul Anderson for upping his donation uh, considerably. Thank you, Paul. That's awesome of you. Uh, I'd like to welcome a new patron, Matt Beck. Matt, thank you for your new donation. I nice. uh, hope you enjoyed the bonus content. And uh, if anybody out there wants to uh, donate, feel free. We're at patreon.com slash tap on. Yeah. All right. That's pretty much that's pretty much it. Our theme song is Moves by Sigmar Drive. Link to that track can be found in the show notes at tadpog.com. All right. Hey, you guys want to close it out? Kyle? Oh, of course we should cl- uh, close it out like a caveman. All right. That makes sense. All right. We good? We good? Ready? Yeah. 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 We good? All right. All right. So until next time. Drop the Uga. Call. Yes. I was saving the Uga for the end, and then you got right in there with the Uga, and I was like, I just quit. (laughs) I I was just like, I I had my club in my hand and everything about the Uga. Oh, I just took all the steam out of it. You went went with it, though. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm already halfway through my swing. It's like when when you're tossing your mate, you got got to finish throwing her. I gave up. I was like, fuck it. If I don't, (laughs) fuck it. Someone's going to beat me to Uga, I'm out. All right, so here here is a a stinger. Uh, it is not a funny stinger. So anybody, if you if you don't want to be bummed out, go ahead and, and not listen to it. But I thought I needed to explain where I'd been for the past few weeks and people asking questions. And I know there's stuff on Facebook, but I'm not Facebook friends with everybody that listens to our show or watches Dave on Twitch or anything like that. So. Uh, what has, what has been going on is, you know, Melissa and I, uh, had twins. She went into labor at about 25 weeks, about 15 weeks early. Uh, we immediately had to go to Louisville, which is the closest level four NICU and where they take 
mothers going in that early. Like, we, there's a NICU in Paducah, but you have to be 28 weeks, so we had to go to Louisville. Um, so on January 27th, she had our beautiful twin boys, Jack and Grayson. Um, and again, at 25 weeks, they're, it's touch and go. It's a very delicate uh, situation, but the doctors and the nurses up at Norton's used to be co are absolutely amazing and did around-the-clock care. Um, they were wonderful. But after about nine days, Grayson developed an infection, and he and he couldn't fight it, and we lost him. So truncate sounds will be getting a lot of this. So, um, but that's where we've been. But Jack is doing wonderful now. So I really want to thank everyone in the nation um, who've reached out, um, gave to the GoFundMe that Dave, you generously started, and Kyle, I know I see you contribute constantly. Um, uh, I'll, I'll be contributing yeah. several times more, so <laughs> don't worry about that. So it's uh, helped us out a lot, having to go back and forth, and Melissa staying in Louisville uh, with Jack. Uh, but everybody's been amazing, and I couldn't be more thankful uh, to, uh, to all the friends that are more like family now at So that's it. That's where we've been. Thank you so much. Um, I love you all. Melissa loves you all. We're endlessly thankful. Thank you.